Hi everyone, welcome to IGCSE Study Buddy, where you can revise chemistry topics from the Cambridge IGCSE syllabus. If you are enjoying our videos so far, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. In this video, you are going to learn the third and final part of topic 4, Electrochemistry. Let's take a look at the electrolysis of aqueous copper 2 sulphate using inert carbon graphite electrodes and copper electrodes. What are the ions present in aqueous copper 2 sulphate? We've got Cu2 plus and SO42 minus ions. Since the electrolyte is aqueous, the presence of water means there are H plus ions and hydroxide ions as well. So, first using inert electrodes, Cu2 plus and H plus will both be attracted to the cathode but only the copper ion will be discharged because copper is less reactive than hydrogen. So at the cathode, copper ions gain electrons and are reduced to form copper metal. The half equation for the reaction at the electrode is Cu2 plus plus 2 electrons giving Cu. Sulfate and hydroxide are both anions, so both are attracted to the anode, but only one gets oxidized. OH- loses electrons and are oxidized to form oxygen gas. This is the half equation for the reaction at the anode. What happens if we electrolyze aqueous copper 2 sulfate using copper electrodes instead of inert electrodes? Once again, the ions present in the electrolyte will be the same. Cu2+, SO42-, H+, and OH- ions. Let's first discuss what happens at the anode. Although the negative ions SO42- and hydroxide ions are attracted to the positive anode, they do not change. Remember, in this case, the anode is not inert. This means that the metal anode itself will react by losing electrons to form ions. In general, metals have a tendency to lose electrons and form cations. Sulfate ions and hydroxide ions are more stable with their negative charges and are less likely to give up electrons. Therefore, some copper atoms in the copper anode will lose electrons or get oxidized to copper 2 plus ions. Now these ions cannot be part of the metal rod. They go into the solution. This causes a decrease in the anode's mass, so the metal anode gets thinner. Now let's see what happens at the cathode. The copper ions in the solution are attracted to the cathode and they gain electrons by reduction to form copper atoms. These copper atoms get deposited on the copper cathode, causing it to increase in mass. The gain in mass at the cathode is equal to the loss in mass at the anode, suggesting that the copper deposited on the cathode comes from the copper ions lost at the anode. Therefore, the concentration of Cu2 plus ions in the electrolyte remains the same since one electrode produces copper ions whereas the other removes them. This process is used to electroplate other metals with copper. Electroplating is a method used to put a thin layer of a metal onto a metal object using electrolysis. So it's used to plate or coat one metal with another. 
metal objects are electroplated to improve their appearance and resistance to corrosion. So this process is commonly used to enhance the appearance of objects such as jewellery for example, providing a shiny or decorative finish. Additionally, the plated layer acts as a protective barrier reducing the risk of corrosion or rusting, thereby extending the lifespan of the metal object. Let's see how metals are electroplated. The negative cathode is the object that needs to be electroplated. The positive anode is the metal we are going to use to coat the object with. The electrolyte will be a solution of the metal we are going to use to coat the object. That is, the electrolyte contains ions of the plating metal. Metal ions in the solution deposit on to the negative electrode while metal ions are let go from the positive electrode to fill in for the ones that were lost in the solution. Let's look at an example. Let's say the negative cathode is iron metal. We want to coat this with silver. And the positive anode is silver metal. The electrolyte is silver nitrate solution AgNO3. The ions present in the electrolyte will be Ag+, NO3-, H+, and OH- ions. So what happens at the cathode? The silver ions in the solution are attracted to the cathode and they gain electrons by reduction to form silver atoms because silver is less reactive than hydrogen. These silver atoms get deposited on the cathode making the iron cathode appear shiny and good. At the anode, remember the anode is not inert. This means that the metal anode itself will react by losing electrons to form ions. Silver atoms on the surface of the silver anode will lose electrons or get oxidized to silver ions. These ions get into the solution. Therefore, the electrolyte gets resupplied with silver ions. Finally, let's learn about hydrogen-oxygen fuel cells. A fuel is a substance that is burned to produce energy. A fuel cell converts chemical energy to electrical energy. A hydrogen-oxygen fuel cell uses hydrogen and oxygen to produce electricity with water as the only chemical product. So hydrogen, this is the fuel, and oxygen gives water and energy is also released. Fuel cells have different users including powering vehicles. Let's discuss the advantages and disadvantages of using hydrogen-oxygen fuel cells in comparison with gasoline or petrol engines in vehicles. The advantages are less pollution. Using hydrogen-oxygen fuel cells in cars lead to a reduction in carbon dioxide emissions since water is the only byproduct of the process. Higher energy. Fuel cells generally have higher efficiency in converting energy. Less noise pollution. Hydrogen fuel cells operate quietly, offering a smoother and quieter driving experience compared to traditional gasoline engines. The disadvantages are challenges in hydrogen storage, 
Hydrogen is in a gaseous state at room temperature and pressure, making it difficult to store effectively in cars. Expensive Fuel cells are expensive, contributing to higher overall costs of manufacturing and purchasing fuel cell vehicles. Limited filling infrastructure there is currently no widespread network of hydrogen filling stations, limiting the convenience and accessibility of refueling. Environmental impact of hydrogen production. While the vehicle itself emits no pollutants, producing the hydrogen fuel generates air pollutants. That concludes Topic 4, Electrochemistry. Are you enjoying our videos? Are they helping you? Here's a way you can show your appreciation and support our continued efforts. You may use YouTube Super Thanks to send us thanks. Hope this video helped you. Please share your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to IGCSE Study Buddy for more revision videos. Bye!